Welcome to another exciting video on sharing with you my techniques for building a Parallax slideshow in WordPress using the Ultimatum theme. Now, of course, you can use any theme, but my favorite theme is 100% the Ultimatum theme because it's got a lot of built-in features that you won't find in other theme frameworks. Very simple, right to the point. We're going to be using Photoshop. We're going to be using After Effects and the Ultimatum theme WordPress. So sit back, relax, crack your knuckles, and I will share with you how simple this is to create an animated GIF parallax animated slideshow. Now this slideshow is actually two slideshows. It's one where the uh, color depth is 128 colors and the other is 256. You'll notice the difference in the quality over here. So you can kind of have all kinds of fun with this. This is basically taken from a flat file photograph that I basically set into different layers and using content aware in photoshop you get some really cool results especially when you bring that into after effects bring it back into photoshop save it out as an animated gift and bring it into your wordpress theme so sit back relax have a beverage crack your knuckles straighten your tie or your bow whatever it happens to be and i'll talk to you in the next video thank you for being here my name is robert farrell Now, keep in mind, I am using Photoshop CC Creative Cloud, content to where it was made available in previous versions of Photoshop CS 5.5 and CS 6. I think, by, I think CS 5 as well. But I'll say this again. You've probably heard me say this many times before. Don't invest and spend time in old software. You know, as students, you can get the entire Adobe suite for about $39, $49 a month. Adobe, go to the Adobe website. I highly suggest that you have the most current version of software. Now, for those of you that say, well, I don't have to pay the money, you're not paying the money. If you're doing this for a living, pass those costs on to your clients. Work smart. Why not have the most advanced tool set at your disposal why do you want to spend time learning an old software program the answer is you don't because we can always make more money but we can't make more time so enough of that speech all right so here's what we need to do i'm going to hide everything except this layer here by holding down the option key macintosh all key for windows i want to make sure this layer is selected therefore that layer is affected and i want to fill this area in with the grass well here's a simple way to do this I'm going to hit Shift W to go to my magic wand tool, and I'm going to select that area here, hold down the Shift key, and select as much as area as I can. All right now, I don't, I want to get a little bit more because what Photoshop needs, it mathematically needs to know about the pixels you're referring. So anything about the selection is under the select menu. Based on these choices, these choice modify selection, we're going to expand the selection by about six pixels and hit OK. Now, if that's too little or too much, you can back that off a little bit. For, but for our needs, this is going to work totally fine. Now, if I hit Shift Delete, Shift Delete is going to bring up the dialog box for Fill. Edit Fill, Shift Delete. Based on these choices, we're going to select Content to Wear, Normal Mode at 100% Opacity, and hit OK. And just like that, if I hit Command D, it did a really good job of doing that. Now, it, it get, did a little bit of stuff down here. That's fine, that, that'll work for us. If you, if you want to not fill this in, you could basically separate out this layer first. It's totally up to you. I don't need to make a museum piece here, but let's just go back a few steps. Command Option Z, Command Option Z, and let's just move this up just a bit. So a simple way to do this is hold down the M key, hold down the Option key, and we're gonna take this away from the area, okay? Actually, I just wanna do something like Option key right about there. Actually, I don't wanna have the elliptical tool. I wanna have the square tool. That will certainly help me. So I hold down the Shift key, and I'm just gonna hold down the Option key and select right through that area. And I don't, I just wanna get a piece of that. If I go to the lasso tool right now, hold down the shift key, I can add to the selection. So I'm just going to add just ever so slightly to this selection right in here. So what I'm trying to share with you, actually I picked the wrong selection tool, the lasso tool, not the, uh, not the polygon tool. Hold down the shift key and I'm just going to select this area right in here. I just want to get exactly that area right there. So therefore it won't bleed over into the grass. So now if I hit shift delete, content to where, 
That's a better interpretation of what we're looking for. Now, keep in mind that it doesn't have to be perfect because Tiger is going to be covered, covering up this area. So if I bring Tiger back, there you go. But as I move him, if I'm going to do a parallax and I move him, I would probably want to, I'd probably want to see nothing behind him, et cetera, et cetera. All right, now let's do the same thing with the ball. So the ball hole needs to be filled in. So I go back here, I go to the wand tool again, and I click right into there, go to the select menu, anything about a selections under the select menu, select modify, modify expand, and let's go a little bit less. Let's go about four pixels on the outside. And shift delete, again, make sure you're inside of that target layer. Otherwise it's not going to work. Shift delete, boom. And that does a really good job covering it up. You'd be hard pressed to see that 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 there was something there before. And if I bring back the ball, that's what I have right now. Make a change, save a change. Now we're not done here because what, what I also want to do is I want to separate this area here for the foreground. So I can do that with my lasso tool. I'm just going to go to my lasso tool and I'm just going to lasso through here. Again, I'm not concerned about this being museum quality. That's something you want to definitely do in your practice. That's why for every 45 minutes of my great training, spend the next two to three hours or more practicing. That's how you get good at this stuff. How do I jump this to a new layer? Well, first of all, make sure you're inside of that layer. What I mean by that, if you're here as an example, it's not going to work. If you're here, it's not going to work. You have to be inside the layer where those pixels live. So Command Shift J, I jump that, and I'm just going to call that front grass. Make a change, save a change. Same thing here, option key, hide everything but that. Make sure you're back inside this target layer. Go to the wand tool, select the area right here. Go to the select menu, select modify, modify expand. Let's do that by four pixels and shift delete for content to wear. So it does a fairly good job patching that area in there. Make a change, save a change. Now I'm gonna bring back all the other layers and here's what I want to share with you. For what we're doing, keep in mind that the objective of this is to go into a slideshow. Okay, the slideshow is going to be 960 pixels wide by roughly 320, 340 pixels high. Well, right now, that's not what I have going on. So one of the first things I will do, in fact, let's actually do that in our next video. Let's resize the image to prepare it for our slideshow. Okay. Now, for those of you that are new to Photoshop, you may think, well, I'm going to go to the e image size here under the image menu. Now, this is going to proportionally make everything bigger. So if you want to do that as a first shot, go around. Let's actually examine that for a second. So I'm going to make this 960 pixels and hit OK. Now, depending on uh, command zero, if it's in window, control zero win for windows. Depending on the resolution, you, you don't want to blow it up too big where it's going to it's going to be blurry or pixelated. So so right now I got the width of what I want this to be. The next thing I'm going to do here, and if this helps you to go to file, I'm going to do that. I'm going to go to file, save as, and I'm just going to call this version 1B. So I have the original version I can go back to because now I'm making some decisional, uh, I'm making some decisions on the width and the height, and maybe I want the original to go back to. So that's certainly a good hack to get into. Now, I talked about this in other versions or other courses on Photoshop, but if you're in the move tool letter V and I hold down the command key for Macintosh or a control key for Windows, wherever I click the ball, tiger, the foreground, see over here, it's going to actually select that layer. And that's what I want to do. I'm in the move tool letter V for move. I hold down the command key or the control key and I select on tiger. Now, what I want to do is I want to resize him down. I want to make him considerably smaller. Command T for transform. And I'm just going to drag this down roughly right about there. And I'm going to put him off to the right side here. In fact, let's cover up that. Let's keep him about right there. Okay, now the next thing I want to do is hold on the command key, select the ball, because I want the ball more in his line of sight, roughly about right there. In fact, let's start the ball right about there. All right, now what I've done here, it makes it really easy to resize the whole entire image, but we're not going to do that with image size. We're going to do that with canvas size. So under the image menu, image canvas size, and I want to resize from the bottom, doesn't matter left or right, but I'm going to resize from the bottom. 
and I'm going to make the height of this about 340 pixels high. Now, if you get a warning sign, say it's going to clip off part of the image, that's okay because it's the top part of the image that we don't really need, and I hit okay. Now, in this particular case, it's cutting off part of him, so let's undo that Command Z and make him considerably smaller. Again, I'm in the Move tool, hold down the Command key, select his image. So that puts me inside of his image again, Command T. I make him a little bit smaller, roughly right about there, and hit the Return key. Incidentally, if you resize an image by hitting Command T and you don't hit the Return key, you're stuck. You either have to double click or hit the Return key, otherwise you're going to stay there forever. You're not going to be able to do anything, not even quit Photoshop. So if you're in this dialog box, make sure you OK those changes by hitting the Return key. So now when I go back up to the Image menu, Image Canvas Size, and again from the bottom, I'm going to make this 340 pixels high. And there you go. Now it says it's going to cut some of it off. That's perfect for our art needs. Now the other thing I want to do, we can do this inside of Photoshop or we can choose to do this inside of After Effects. I'm going to choose to do this inside of Photoshop. What I'm going to do is hold down the Command key, click, and I can basically do Content Aware for this area as well. So I'm going to select the area right here. I want to get rid of that. I'm going to select my M for Marquee Tool. I'm going to select this area here. No disrespect to Getty Images, but I don't want that there. So Shift Delete. And actually, I need to go a little bit bigger than that. So select, modify, expand. Let's expand that by three pixels. So again, it needs to know what area you're talking about. So I want to fill with this area on the outside. So I hit shift, del shift, delete, and hit the return key. And that goes bye-bye. And that's a fairly good job of that. Make a change, save a change. Now, let's look at what we have. You can position this any place you want Keep in mind that this image here is in front, okay? So I want to have this grass in front of him. So I'm going to take grass and move that in front. So it's covering him up. If I hold down the command key, wherever I move him to, because he's in the back. See, he could actually pop up like Groundhog Day if you want him to, okay? Make a change, save a change. So this is in the front. Now, if you want to put the ball in front of everything too, we can do that as well by dragging that to the top. So the order should be back grass, then the subject, then actually we could do the ball and then the front grass. That's probably going to make a lot more sense. I save the file as a PSD file. Now I go into Adobe After Effects, and this is where the magic happens. So stay tuned to the next video.